So how are you guys? Good. Really? It's super quiet, silent. It was entirely. I need to be more friendly with people. Where are you guys? Good. Joe, wait! Hello! Someone I can be friendly with awkwardly to be okay. Wait, you can't do that for somebody. I'm trying to reach out, and I'm really bad. Keep telling me. Is there a person? No. Uh, you. Okay. I'm going to make a large bow armor, man. I just like front seats, because they're good. I like to talk to myself. I like to be able to see everything. <coughs> what? Why are you surprised? Yeah, that's what we just said. That's probably what you saw in the last year. I just heard it happen back to Wallace. <coughs> Okay, well, let's get started. My name is John. I'm by Ronan Online. Most said hi to me so far. So, I will give you warning. If you want to make large foam armor, turn back now because it's a long, dark path. I'm so good. So, okay. <laughs> warning. So, here's some uh, examples of you know, anywhere from not just large, but like halo armor up to this kind to. Um, this is one of my friends recently made this Megatron costume. Uh, we got another, this is a different type of space brain, a huge one. You got Iron Man. Yeah, here's some from over in Japan they made. Some Transformers and Grimlock. I thought that would be pretty cool. So, any way you go about it, there's things to consider. Because a lot of times when people will make armor, um, they'll be really gung ho, they'll make the helmet, show all these shots. Nothing updated for a while, then all of a sudden, hey, I got this helmet for sale. You want on? <laughs> so, it is, I mean, people don't understand when you get into it, it is a huge thing. Um, but it's highly rewarding. I'm, I actually try to be a very humble guy, but I'll tell you, it's friggin' awesome. <laughs> Give you an idea, at a, a comma, or a fan access here, <clears throat> there's a booth babe who pretty much hanging out, everything. You know, up top was hanging out, and no one was talking to her. And I had this huge group of people around me. And you, honestly, you know, you have the booth babes, and large armor are the rock stars. It really is. You will, if you want attention, you will get attention. I should have put it, I just realized how I should have. I have this one picture of my son, who he's looking like, oh. because this is when he first got there. That was after a half hour of, and then 500 pictures later. <laughs> so he, he was like, can we just go see the Legos? <laughs> so first I want to talk about why would you want to use EVA foam? So hopefully most of you know what EVA foam is by now. Um, if not, you can ask me and we'll recap the class. But I want to talk about how you can use it versus the other things. Because sometimes it's not always the best option. But sometimes it is for what you're doing. So a lot of people, for cheap, they go for cardboard. You can make great costumes out of cardboard, see some really detailed Iron Man out of cardboard. But what you got to do is essentially it goes along with this fiberglass and Bondo and cardstock. Uh, what they'll do is they'll use Pepecora and either print out a cardstock or use thin paper and then use cardboard as their template. And then what they do is you have to harden it then. So that's where the fiberglass and Bondo comes in. And one thing with that. I was going to bring this other helmet that I actually did that with. It's really heavy. It doesn't breathe. And when you're making it big, it's it's a very uncomfortable. So, uh, but if you're doing a small things, like say you're just doing a, a halo helmet, that especially if you want to recast it for some reason, that's the way to go because the fiberglass and cardboard, or just fiberglass and uh, cardstock even, uh, is really good. Like some people, what they'll do is the helmets is they'll do it out of cardboard and then do fiberglass and bond on top of it and a lot of sanding and shaping, sanding and shaping, but then you can make a cast out of it pretty easy. Um, the difference between the cardboard and the cardstock is just the thickness, really, but basically what you do with it afterwards is the same thing. Um, Sintra works really great, but as the other class we talked about, it doesn't curve every direction. And so, it can be good, but then you're adding the weight on top of it as well, especially if you're doing something big. Uh, Warbla, excellent for details, but if you're going to make a huge armor, that's going to be expensive. Now you can, on certain pieces, like I'm going to actually experiment with 
And we've talked about this is you take a EVA foam and overlay it with warp. You know, especially on the detail, I'm going to make a sword like that. But, um, you know, if you were to do that over a whole costume like this, <laughs> that could be way expensive. Uh, talk about styrofoam. Some people actually do use styrofoam on stuff. Um, but when you're doing large stuff like this, especially if you paint it, it's just going to eat away. It's going to be brittle. And so I'd recommend not using that with rigid foam. This is the insulation pink foam a lot of people use. Um, it can be really great. But again, you know, it's, it's insulation. It's meant to keep heated. <laughs> so, you know, EVA foam on its own is really hot. That's going to be even hotter. Uh, what some people will do, and this goes along with the uh, expanded foam too. It's kind of the same idea. You can use it for like a sword or weapons like that. There's no way I'd make a full set of armor out of it. And it becomes too soft. Some people, what they do is actually with the foam board, the, what they'll do is they'll peel the paper off of it and use that. But in order to make it look good, you're still going to have to resort to the fiberglass and bondo, and that adds to your cost, that adds to the weight. So, you know, it really depends on what you're doing and how much you can afford. So, some things to consider. I found this picture the other day. It's the original Godzilla movie, uh, back there, behind the scenes. <laughs> so, so, you want to create something. Okay, what's it from? What do you do you know what it's from? So where can I get pictures? Is are you gonna be some obscure mecca that is only on one show and one shot? Okay, good luck with that. You know, because maybe you have a good front shot. Well, what about sides? What about back? Uh, you will get nitpicked by those people and you just tell them to shut up. Has anyone done it before? Look online, see if someone's done it. You get you talk to them. A lot of people, as we see, is this cosplayer is a really good talk to be about it. Like the guy that made the Megatron, I've been talking to him lately. And he's a really cool guy. And, he, and a lot of us that have made these kind of suits, we kind of group and bounce ideas off each other. And you know, how did you do this? How did you do that? Rigid pieces versus flex, flexible. Um, helmets. Sometimes you like to be rigid. Sometimes you want it to be piece flexible. I'll pass these around. Most of you have seen them, but so this is they're both EVA foam. This one's made out of the thicker stuff. This one's made out of thinner. Uh, this one's a hardened because it's kind of a an older stormtrooper type, best way to describe it. And this one I made uh, afterwards. I would have done this one in this way, but I didn't have discovered by then. And so you can kind of see the difference between the foam. You know, it's still squishy, but in how you paint it. It looks better. How is it going to fit your body? Okay, so one of the reasons why I went this with a with, uh, space brain is I play Warhammer 40k and it's where it's from. But one is when they announced fan, our Comic Con last year, I'm like, you know, I want to dress up. I've never done anything like that before, so I'm going to do a Stormtrooper. Well, I started looking around and, and uh, making it, buying it. Well, I'm not really built to be a Stormtrooper. You know, so I was just poking around. I'm like, okay, well, maybe a uh, commando from, uh, like, a clone commando. They're kind of bigger people still. And then for some reason, I came across a guy that did one of these. I'm like, ooh, I like that. And I got into this, this forum where all these guys make them. You know, there's probably about 20 of us worldwide that have made complete uniforms, a bunch more that are in progress. But it's a way to, you know, once I did that, I'm like, I'm a big guy. I can kind of hide between it, behind it. It looks, it fits my body type, and I really like it. Uh, this is a big one too. Where's all the weight going to be? This is why I like this picture here. You know, all the weight from his shoulder or his legs are right there, right on his shoulder. This is one thing I discovered last year. Uh, originally, when I did this, I just had some old army suspenders, and they went down, connected to a belt. The legs were to my belt. And everything kind of hung off my shoulders. I had to wear that all day because I was in the contest and stuff like that. And we couldn't go out because of the fire code and all that. So I had to be in that all day. And that was not fun. And then I actually redesigned it for this year. Um, I did a, up here I kind of did a little platform and then put suspenders down. But still after about two, three hours, my, my shoulders were killing me because I realized Again, I shifted all the weight. 
onto my shoulders. But what I did here, and depends on what you're doing, I found this army frame at the Edward Surplus store. I had the straps already from an old army rucksack, and it curves the body. Basically, you know, a couple weeks ago, I, uh, the whole thing is probably about 50, 60 pounds. And you can actually make it lighter, but I just have a lot of mechanical stuff to make it feel better. And I wore it for about 12 hours within a, a weekend period. And when I was done after that, it just felt like I took a hike. So all the weight for this, I have a kidney pad in there and a shoulder pad. So it's just like a backpack. It's just exactly like a backpack. So as you start thinking about what you're going to do is how are you going to design it? And I would, the first one I designed outward in. So I did all the outside stuff. Then I figured out how am I going to hold it on my body. Well, you don't really want to do that. You want to go outside in. So you, how are you going to build your body? And then build the pieces around that. So that's why here, um, last year I had the legs, I had the arms with the same, but then uh, once I put this on, the diaper part didn't fit. So I'm like, okay. So I didn't want to, but I have to redesign that. So now I got to redesign that. So now the waist piece didn't fit. And so now, so I had to kind of redesign the whole thing. And the chest piece, I want to design something that, like say I want to put a different chest piece on. Or, you know, in the mythos of this, this warriors, some of them have jump packs, like jet packs. So maybe I want to do that down the road. Or, and so I came up with this, where most people would have the one piece, you know, mine snaps together, use a lot of snaps, Velcro. And so basically what I do is when I put, when I put everything together, the shoulder pads, you know, click into here, put everything together, except, uh, and then I just put on like backpack, strap the belt around, and then this part right here, this hides the connection. If you can see that right there. And so once I got it on, once I do the, the belt up, or actually no, I put this on, then the belt up. And then the belt itself, I have a straps that run right here. They go from this top piece to this, to right under the actual belt loop, which are handles from our drawer, I found. So that way I can actually use these pouches and put things in them. You know, put like uh, glue or something like that. And actually have a, a piece here where it's electronically, and it makes some stomping sounds. So to walk around, it goes, you know, it's, I found it on ThinkGeek. So you can put electronics in there too. So think about how, you know, we saw the one, uh, what's her name, Kamui? Kamui. Kamui, that's a Kamui. You know, she has his, uh, LEDs in there. Well, that means batteries. Well, how are you going to hide the batteries? If you can do a very form-fitting armor, <coughs> you got to figure out where you get the batteries, where you run the wires, things like that. Uh, will, will it be balanced? You have, say you have uh, a big mecha that has a big wingspan. Are you going to be walking like this the whole time? Now, how are you going to balance it? So you got to kind of figure it out. Maybe you can, but then you got to strap the belt, like straps coming down from the belt to pull it more towards center, center of gravity. How you, how is it going to go together? You know, you can make an awesome costume, but if you can't get in it, what's the point? You know? And so, like this, you know, I broke it down so I could transport it. And, you know, it depends on what you're doing. Probably arms are going to be separate, legs are going to be separate. Now, I'm not going to be able to pack this on a plane, but it's like I pack it in my car and go somewhere. And you're going to need lots of belts and straps and what are called Chicago screws. They're rivets that screw together. Uh, I prefer those. Uh, webbing. I was actually in, in luck. I found this webbing, found four rolls of 50 yards at DI for like three bucks each. Yeah, I was lucked out. And so I used that like crazy. Um, buckles, the best place to get buckles right here in bulk. The uh, best is Amazon, but if you want them right now is Kirkham's. It's on about 33 South State Street. It's a camping store and tents. But they actually have a section in their tent repair set area with different size uh, little pieces here. And so you can just get them there, and they're pretty good people there. And they're fairly priced, average price. Where are you going to store it? 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing. You know, if I got this awesome thing, but I have a small apartment. Where are you going to put it? Let's be realistic. You know, and uh, luckily for me, I have a, a unfinished basement, so I kind of put it together. This is Steve. He's my PVC dummy. My kids named him that. And uh, so he kind of holds my armor together in a corner. It looks like there's a dude sitting in my corner of a basement at night, but yeah, it's out of the way. It scares away robbers, man. Yeah. <laughs> and because also, when you sit this stuff down, uh, especially like a leg piece, something like that, what happens over time is just gravity just kind of compresses it and stuff. So you want to kind of store it how you wear it. And that's why a PVC dummy or, or a, a duct tape dummy, that's works best. How are you going to transport it? You know, you're going to have this, and you got an old Geo Metro car. Well, that's probably not going to fit. Uh, so, if you're going to design something, maybe a friend, maybe that, uh, just something to consider in, in design. So, how far can you break it down? Like, for example, I can break this down into like the largest piece are going to be maybe one of the shoulders or leg piece. Um, so, what I do is when I get somewhere, then I buckle and snap and take all that time. So then it only takes me about, once I get it assembled, about 20 minutes. And one thing, good thing too, is there's these cutter pins. Especially if you're dealing with PVC connections, you drill a hole through with both connections, slip this in, locks itself. You don't have to worry about bending it, you don't have to worry about anything like that. So. They're really useful. You can find those on the lower lows, anything like that. What was it? Wait, what are those for? Yeah, I don't understand. What? Um, for example, for me, what I do, or actually, here's a, I'll just use this as an example. Say you got a piece that has, PVC, like, say, wings. You have some wings. Well, those are going to be big. You use PVC. PVC is a pretty normal thing to use for a wing structure. Okay, so you have two pieces of PVC like this. Instead of gluing them, you just put a, a drill a hole through there, put a pin through there, and just snap it together. So then you can just pull this pin out and make part. These specifically, I use right here. Um, and this uses, this is actually a design I came up with. It's PVC pipes, but it makes ball socket. And so when you take this, If you look, let me get this one. This one has a rope on the chain on it. I'll pass this around. So in here, this is a socket that I, I screwed on and glued on here. And so with this piece and this, it's a total ball socket for my rotator. So I can rotate it around, I can do anything I need with it. And I, it works awesome. One of the other things to think about as you're designing it is, are you going to need help? A lot of times, you know, handlers are essential for a lot of costumes. For example, this one that I created, a lot of the guys that do these, you know, in Mythos, these guys are eight foot tall, they're huge, and so they'll put stilts on there. Well, they can't do stairs, things like that. I figured, you know, the only person I'm going to have help me sometimes is my seven year old son, and so, you know, what? How much can I do myself? And I actually designed that from the bottom up that I want to be maneuverable and I want to do as much as I can myself. And so I sacrificed that for you know realism and I created it so I can do everything except the sides here. Go to the bathroom. <laughs> what gets that? Oh, you can. Yeah. <laughs> That's a point. That's a, something to consider. It yes. really is. So I can do anything but the sides and my shoelaces because in my boots. Ah. Oh, come on, Steve. I actually have, they're basically snowshoes that I can put my shoes inside of in the straps. I actually found some snow, old snowshoes at DI and took the straps off, nailed them to a board, and so I can take my shoes off and walk around if I have to. So I can do everything. But my laces. My laces actually made it easy, so it's just a, a slide. That's so smart. So, and one thing with this, actually, this is a new design. I haven't actually tested these yet, uh, other than just around the house. 
But one thing is slipping your shoe in. You ever try to put a shoe on without using your hands? You get the back and everything? Well, that's I found these around the house, and they're good, and so I'm going to try it. It has a higher back. And so far, I've been able to slip my feet in no problem. So before, I had to have someone help me you know, pull the back out. So, so that's something to seriously consider is, are you going with a group? Awesome if you got a group. You have friends, you have helpers. If you don't, what do you have? If all of you go in a group and all of you have large armor, well, what are you going to do about that? Yeah. So, okay, so how are you going to actually build it? Where are you going to get the stuff? Pepakura, this is where Pepakura comes in. Um, oh, I did bring it up. Anyway, so Pepakura is made to create a template. And you can either take that template and make turn that into your item. That's where Bondo and Fiberglass comes into. Or you can take that template, lay it on the foam, cut it out, and then glue the foam together. And this is where a little bit of 3D models come in. And most of the people who do these. Uh, are know how to get into the game, pull out the 3D file, and convert it into a Pepakura file. And you can, there's, depending on what game you're doing, there's a lot of different uh, ways to do it or tutorials online how to do it in the game. Like what I've been doing recently is Fallout. There's some out there, but I wanted more. Or, for example, Skyrim, I want to do an Imperial Legion armor. Well, there, there's a whole page of Skyrim armor, but not that one. So I was going to start doing it, but then I realized it's, it's actually pretty simple. I could probably freehand it. Um, but anyway, so maybe if you know some 3D model people there, or Blender is a free 3D model program, you can tend to pull stuff out. There's a guarantee, whatever you're looking for, if it's PC-based, there's a way to get it out. Um, other platforms, um, there are ways, but it involves emulators and all that stuff. I'm sure someone somewhere has figured out how to do it. And that can go for, say, there's a specific sword you want to full armor you want from something. So, do you have a question? Not that right. So, one of the problems when you pull it out is, you know, programmers don't think about human size uh, models when they do it. So, for example, one of the models I was looking at pulled it out, and then once I converted it over to Pepecora, it scaled to be about that big. You know, it could fit like a little munchkin or something. So you kind of have to, this is where you look online for tutorials like that and, and scale it. And a lot of people, what they'll do is they'll just have, they'll say, oh, you know, there's this, they know about the files. I'm looking for this scale of a Pepecora file. Um, but really, th there's just no way to use the same scale for the whole thing. I'm going to use probably four or five different scales from two or three different people that created files, and then you still had to freehand some things. So, so unless you're perfectly sized, like you know, not, you know, like the person who created it, you're gonna have to do some freehanding here and there. And this is where uh, there's different programs. MeshLab is it can usually reads a 3D file. There's sometimes it won't, sometimes it will. What you can do is you can pull it out and then pull it into the SketchUp, which is free from Google, and that reads a lot of things. And so you can actually import a, a human human person in there, a model, kind of fit your armor to where it is, and then export it into Pepecura, and it'll be almost the same size one. And there's there's tutorials online how to do that. And so, I, you know, this is this could actually be a whole class by itself. So I don't want to get too much in there. Timetable. I mentioned this. This is what I was talking to you the other day about. Is you got a con coming up. This is actually they use these a lot for house building. So this is actually what this is. You're building a house. Um, it's called a, a schedule. So this is your con right here. Okay. What steps do you need to do, and how long is it going to take? You have to be realistic. This is where you can't just say. I'm going to make one of these for FantasyCon next week. 
No friggin' way. I don't know. <laughs> Man, Give me an idea. All. My first one I did, like so this is kind of the second version of it. First one I did, I guesstimated about 200 hours. And so that was, it took me about three months, um, two or three hours a night just working on it. And that was part of it is learning the skills too. So once you get there, you can go faster. But still, you have to be realistic. And so what I, and how a schedule works is you start here and say, okay, well, I think the last thing I need to work on is the, what do I absolutely need to get done to have this costume? And then start working backwards. Say, okay, shoes, and then, you know, or painting. Actually, even past that, painting. What stage you got to get the painting? What, you know, building, all that stuff. So you can see what, uh, what it is. So if you start building now, you may be ready for Fanex next year. You could even be ready for uh, to for uh, Comic Con. Depends on how fast you're good at it or how much free time you have. But if you're a person that needs to figure that out, you know, there's if you go online for building schedules, it'll give the idea of you know how to backdate stuff because you can't just overnight with these things. Because also, you know, you got testing in there. Once you get it done, you know, there's many times I've had this cool idea, got done, walking around, okay, this doesn't work at all. You know, so you got a testing phase in there. And so that's why large art, uh, large costumes like this really require a lot of work. People think, oh, I'm going to do this, and they don't realize how much time is invested in this. If you want to do it, good. I didn't when I first did it. Okay, so where are you going to build it? You're going to build it in your front room. You know, you know, I have an office space that I use in my, in my basement covered in foam. Pieces, shredding, you know, I should, probably should have sanded outside, but this is a bad carpet anyway, so I didn't care. And uh, we're ripping it out. So, you know, where are you going to store it while you're doing it? What about chemicals and fumes? You know, these are things you really need to consider when you're doing this. Um, these two are very important too, depends on your situation. Kids love shiny things, so if you have a bunch of blades you've been using, and you're just throwing it in a pile. <clears throat> oh, what are all these blades? You know, here is a, a very important one too, especially if your significant other isn't into cosplaying. How are you gonna keep them happy if you're working on your stuff all the time, and they get no time there with the kids all the time, or whatever it is, the situations. So it's something to seriously consider if you want. If you want to have fun, you got to take care of business. It applies pretty well with roommates as well. Yeah, that too. That's why I said significant other because they would be a significant other, you know, because they are significant in your thoughts. Yeah. Well, <laughs> well to a degree. Okay, this is a huge one. Costs. This costs lots of money. The first one, I actually probably I'll say. I'm in probably about two thousand dollars. Wow. So far. Probably more, I didn't keep track. And I don't want to keep track. And so that's why I told you at the beginning, it's a long, dark path. Because there is a lot involved. And some of that is tools, some of that is like, for example, when I buy buckles, I'll buy like 50 at a time. Um, even though I'll need four or five right now, but I don't want to have to make another order. So uh, I, I was Talking to some other guys that make these, you could probably make one of these bare minimum for probably about seven to eight hundred dollars. You know, but I have a lot in like hardware. I like to, you know, I don't want to be tired when I wear it. Things like that, and so that costs money here and there. But actual foam, um, you know, if it's bare minimum, no real details, no real paint weathering. You didn't have to buy the tools originally. Probably about seven eight hundred dollars. So, if you can see the amount of foam I put in here, depending on what you want to build, you can kind of see the cost involved. Um, now, you can cut costs a little bit by, you know, some people what they do and weight is uh, use the thinner foam and harden it. So, I'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. This is what I was talking about is there's too many unfinished projects out there. Is you go to any forum, they're building this, you'll see, like I said, you'll see the helmet. I did an awesome job. Then they kind of putter out on the rest because they realize how much is involved and these other things they didn't consider. Um, you'll rarely see a commission on these large ones. I'm not saying it won't happen, but it's rarely just because 
you know, like I said, if I put a thousand dollars into supplies, you know, usually it's supplies plus commission, so or uh, plus labor, so labor would be another thousand dollars. So you tell someone two thousand dollars for this, people are gonna think you're ripping them off, but really, that's a good deal. Yeah. Um, so since you've made these armors and people mm -hmm. have been discouraged, but like to prevent yourself from having an unfinished product, would you recommend like starting with a few? Yes, and that's what I, I recommend that for my EBA class is, um, you know, everyone, if you want to have just a helmet, hey, I have no problem. Actually, that's what happened here. I made this helmet. I realized it's not exactly what I wanted, so I just stopped. But I have a cool helmet, so it really depends on what you do. But I've already done skills on some other stuff. My first helmet that I made for this, I don't really like it anymore. Yeah, I think it was like junk, um, stuff like that. But you know, because I started on helmets, I wanted that cool piece. But that's where you your EVA skills is, is, you know, start on like a boot, on a leg piece. And then as you build up, get to the helmet. But if you just want to build a cool helmet, hey, that's no problem too. You know, I know people that do that. Um, like I'm thinking of building a uh, uh, Cyberman helmet just to have. <laughs> you know, who doesn't want a Cyberman helmet? Uh, so sometimes you can. But you're not going to make money doing this stuff, really. The, what you'll make money on is the props, um, other armor pieces, stuff like that. But these large ones like this, I, I would even recommend not because you're not going to get the money back that you, you're investing time in. Because if you tell someone two, $3,000, they're going to think you rip them off. But, oh, I can get it cheaper from this guy over here. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, good luck. So. The conversation that we had on Facebook. Oh yeah. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's where it was. Fifty dollars. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, we were in this discussion on our platforms on Facebook. This this guy wanted to make a suit similar to this, and I was like, you know, to be honest, I mean, you're looking at probably about thousand, fifteen hundred for supplies like that. Like, no way, you can get this here and that here. It's like, good luck. Yeah, and Johnny was chiming in too, and it's really it's serious. And so, if you want something like this, you're gonna have to build it. Now, if you have some buddies and you want to get together and build them. That's what I'd recommend. You can help each other out, but don't expect to make money on this. And if you want to have someone make it, it's going to be pricey. Uh, supplies, Harbor Freight. Harbor Freight is the, one of the best places for cosplayers uh, for this kind of stuff. You can get tools cheap. You can get supplies cheap. Um, all this foam I got at Harbor Freight. So, and I've mentioned this before: is buy the cheapest tools you can, and then upgrade as needed. Because you know, if you buy a palm sander, or say a Dremel is a really good example. If you buy a more expensive Dremel, you know, it has 20 speed settings, but you're only using one setting the whole time. Well, you just wasted all that extra money. Now, if you use a buy the one that has one speed setting, you realize you need more, then you buy a bigger one. And that's the way to just keep costs down. Because sometimes, most of the time, you realize you don't need the more options um, until you're way down the road. Okay, so this is, um, is anyone here was not in my EVA phone classes? Okay, well basically, I'll put this up here. Is this the same list of tools you'll need for EVA foam? Um, you know, you need high temp glue, blades, all this stuff here. So this is, I'll put this up. This is what I feel is the bare minimum you need to do to EVA foam. And, you know, most people will have a lot of these if you've been doing cosplay stuff. Yeah, I'll post it. Okay, this is what I mentioned before, trials. And not like suffering trials, but as in walking around and see how it works. Uh, one of the best ways is, you know, you build it, just walk around your neighborhood and see how things fit. You get some odd looks, it's pretty fun. <laughs> so I was, you know, when I was in the other day, drive, I was like, what's up? You know, so it's kind of fun. I was talking to another guy you know, about walking around uh, Liberty Park. So it depends where you live. Just walk around your neighborhood, see how things fit. Have a friend film you because sometimes it looks great from the front, but maybe the back is falling apart as you're doing it. Um, like one thing I was doing on my other builds, I had my wife film me and my belt on here, and I had the pouches. Well, I didn't realize, but the pouches all fell. And they were like around my knees, and I didn't notice it the whole time. 
until I looked at the video afterwards. I was like, why didn't she tell me that? You know, but it's one of those things. So it's it's a good to have those reference pictures. And a lot of times too is if you're helping someone out, they'll want to say, hey, do you have any side shots? Do you have any back shots? What does it look like? You know, how does it look when you move your arms around? Um, things like that. So it'll help you figure things out. Uh, then, yeah, reference picks, picks, get opinions. Say, you know, I'll have this walk around, or you know, especially in a group of other people who are doing that same type of stuff, say, you know, uh, I can't get my arm to rotate right. What are any ideas there? Uh, do you have, you know, I want to be able to put stilts in. How can I create stilts? Uh, things like that. You know, for example, like saying people that build these will put stilts in them. Well, I couldn't really figure out how to make a stilt and make it look proportional because uh, what I have to do is make the boot bigger, make this taller. So it really depends on how you're building it. And so sometimes you can do it, sometimes you can't. So get opinions, ask questions. You know, a lot of people will have the same questions. One question I have, especially why I started doing YouTube video for my stuff, is, for example, I couldn't find any shots of the interior of someone's costume that built these. It's like, how do you actually snap it together? How do you do it? Or, you know, they show pieces, but then and then they show it on. But and how do you actually go about putting it on? You know, how are the steps involved? Those things uh, would really helpful and. Like for example, I referenced a lot of Iron Man pictures. People have done Iron Man costumes because it's it's about the same thing. Stormtrooper. Uh, so find someone that's you know those bigger armor ones all have a lot of the same thought process going into them. So you can figure out what they're doing and see what works with some doesn't. Okay, this is a big one. You want to show off? You got your awesome costume. So like again. Yeah. Are you going to need help getting around? That was a picture I took last year. Of, uh, that, uh, just some trip photographer took a picture. It was relaxing. That looks relaxing. <laughs> Believe it or not, it was. Um, the biggest thing, and we hear this a lot at cons, stay hydrated. Because you will lose about 10 pounds wearing it. It's, it's like wearing a sauna, a sauna suit. And here's where your question is, how are you going to go one and two? You know, you know, one you can for guys list this. I kind of just pull aside and hope for the best. <laughs> but you know, women, it's a little bit different. How are you going to do that? How and if you decide you're going to have a burrito for lunch at the con while this, well, you might have to get out of it a little quicker later on. And so, how, what's the quickest way to get out of it without ruining it? You know, so those things you need to consider. Do you really need a for at least guys, there's something called a, a stadium buddy, where you can, you build it right into the suit. It's for going in a stadium. And do you want to wear a diaper? I mean, are you that dedicated? <laughs> so uh, I'm just putting it out there. These are serious considerations that I've had discussions about when we're designing these things. Uh, physically getting an event. You build one of these, your only mode of transportation is tracks. Good luck. Uh, so, you know, how are you going to do it? If, I'll tell you, the Salt Palace is great if you can get there early and get a parking spot underneath. Um, if you can't, at least this year I realized, I don't think they're doing it for FantasyCon, but if the west entrance is open, there's a parking lot right across the street. There's a big parking lot where the Salt Lake, or Salt Lake, uh, no, at least business college is. It's just right there. Um, it's kind of on the, there's, I think it's JBs or whatever used to be there on the other side of the parking lot. But there's actually, essentially, I think KSL's there too. But there's a parking lot right there. It's right on the, and right on the other side of the road is the west entrance to get the, the Salt Palace. And it's less crowded too, I realize. No one would use it this year. So do not, you need help again, you know, you know, what I have to do is I have to sit down and snap it all together, get dressed by my car, and then go in. So how do you do that? Where are you take breaks? Um, Fantasy Con is doing a cool thing, and I've heard rumor that Salt Lake Community or uh, Comic Con might do this too. Is they're gonna have a headless room where essentially people with the costumes can go in, take the stuff off, and relax. What I had to do at Fantasy Con or Fanex and Salt Lake or uh, Comic Con is I just had to find an out of the way place 
this I actually found a good spot on the second floor. There's a by one of the elevators, kind of goes back into a corner, and it's kind of hidden there. And because one thing you'll want to do is everyone will want to take pictures of you, whether you're in your costume or not. Half in your costume, come in and out of the bathroom. We don't want to take pictures of you. It's like, come on, can't you just wait till I get it back on? I, mean, I want to get you the best picture possible, but at least let me break. And so if you can get out of the way, out of sight, that's the best. Uh, moving in crowds, this is where, especially depending on your costume, uh, one guy I know, he's actually building a video camera system so you can see, and a monitor, because he can't see out of it. And so he's going to have to have people in front of him to help him. So you have to adjust that. So those things to consider is how you're going to move through a crowd, because on one of these, you will create a crowd. I made Carl Urban wait for the last one. <laughs> But he was really cool. I, I, I didn't realize he hired me, and I moved out of the way. And his golf cart came by, and he's like, "Whatever." Like, yeah. <laughs> so it, it was actually pretty cool. But you know, you will you will create a crowd no matter where you go. Um, practice your poses and smiles. You, you want to get them the that's what we're there for is to show off. So you want to get them the best picture possible. So you know, let them know that you know ready and uh, posing. I actually had to kick my son out of a lot of the pictures because he would just sit there. Like, Come on, get out of here, then. And so, you know, practice that. How are you going to handle malfunctions, repairs? Yeah, uh, you, you forgot that one cotter pin at home. How are you going to handle it? You forgot that somewhere along the way that strap fell off. What do you do? Uh, what I do is I always have um, a Sharpie wrapped in duct tape to have some extra duct tape, and then some 550 cord, which is paracord, and super glue. With those things, you can repair just about anything. And so what I'll do is, that's why I actually have these finite pouches, so I'll keep that stuff in there. And so you never know. Something, things happen. Um, kids, kids love big stuff. They'll call you Transformers. They'll call you everything but you actually are. <laughs> but who cares? Yeah. You know, they're the ones, they're the ones that make it fun, I, in my opinion. And because they're the ones that are stoked, they're so happy to see you. They don't care what you are. You're something big and shiny. And they love you. And that's where it ties into here too. Is some people are going to nitpick. Some people are going to know who you are. Some people aren't. Um, I've been called Transformer. I was called Iron Man with Thor's hammer. And, uh, <laughs> you just say, "Yep, that's what I am." <laughs> and you just smile and take a picture and. On your way. Okay, so this is the real motivation. There's some pictures that I, I really like that have you know, pictures of kids and stuff like that. And, um, there's Dan. He, he's the one that does the uh, Predator. He's in the latex one. That's him. Me and him are the event together. And this is my buddy. He did the Mega Man. He's saying this kid actually came up to him at a con and just held his hand for a while and talked to him. <laughs> <laughs> So it was pretty awesome, and uh, you know this was this is actually right before the contest last year. And there was one of the families; he was a little hobbit and was talking to him and stuff. And so, I mean, once you get into it, I'm sure I've told you the experience before. Is yeah. is like once a kid lights up seeing you, it's like that's why I'm doing it. You're in. Well, I found out if you cosplay to impress the fans, you're gonna fail sometimes. If you cosplay to impress the kids. Win 100%. You know? <laughs> you can see there that the helmet is actually too big. That was my old helmet. Okay. That's it. Any questions? Any comments? Ready to keep yourself cool. Lots of water. Um, first, my, I was actually lucked out. I met the arm holes, and then when I'm walking around, there's two things that I found. Basically, you don't stay cool. You burn up. Uh, but there's some things you can do. What I use is uh, uh, Under Armour that wicks away. Um, underwear, something like that. So it wicks that the stuff away. I also, if I'm going to be going a long time, like uh, a couple weeks ago, I, I did these two events and I had some time in between. So I changed my underwear, shirt, because your shirt will be soaked. Uh, and so you just, you just change everything and just get back out there and go for it. Um, but luckily, with these things, in the salt palace, if I hit the right, I'm on the second floor, 
if I hit the vent coming down, it hits just right and shoots right back into my suit. <laughs> so I found this out. I'd be like walking around like. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm starting right here. Take your pictures. <laughs> and uh, and also if I'm, if I'm outside, it just, wind blows in there pretty good. So that's something to consider your design too. One thing I do though is helmets. This helmet adds about 10 degrees. Okay. Um, but what I actually did just the other day is I'll pass this around. Or I don't know if you guys saw it, but there's a fan on the inside. Yeah, it's like So I got it off a video card. A lot of times you can, I found it at BI. Um, and the video card fans are good because what they're designed to do is suck up the heat and push it out sideways. So for this type of helmet, it's perfect. Another thing you can do for helmets is look at paintballing supplies. Because uh, they'll have like paintball fans to keep their their masks dry or uh, cooled. Um, you can you can get some anti fog stuff to put on that back if you got a, a visor or something like that, or you can spit and rub it on there. It actually works really good. Um, and so you just kind of best you can just have a lot of the idea. If you want to put fans in your costume, what I found out is the fans aren't there to keep you cool; it's to pull the heat out. So if you design like that, it's to increase the airflow. Because last year, I actually had this awesome backpack, put a, a camel back in it, put a uh, fan in it, so it blew air into my suit. Like, this is going to be awesome. It was 90 degrees, did not work. Mm. Like, it didn't work good enough. I'm like, and it weighed probably about probably about 40 pounds on its own, just because I had a UPS battery in there, the big heavy ones. And I was like, it's not worth the weight. So I actually didn't, that's why I don't, last year I didn't wear my, Backpack, but now I've designed them so it's just a foam backpack. Um, and any that's the only fan I have in there is designed to, to suck the air out and increase the airflow, not to cool me down. So, hmm? uh, well, if anyone has a fan, uh, where is the best place to get visors like stuff for visors so you can see through it? I know motorcycle helmet, um, it depends on what kind of visor, I'll tell you. If you're doing a helmet that has eye lenses, yeah, sunglasses, um, there's a company called Glow Specs, G L O S P E X. And what they do, they sell different colors. I don't know if you can see that very well. But the visors light up. There's LEDs built in it, and this company just built them that way. Um, these, I think they redesigned it, so you have to find the older versions of it if you want this. And you just break it apart, put it in there. Um, and so that's that type. A full visor like this, say like a Mandalorian, a Stormtrooper, like that, this is actually a replacement welding visor. Or a, not a welding, but a, a, fish, a safety shield. You know, the kind that flip up and come down. This is a replacement one. It cost me like five bucks on, on Amazon. So, how do you cut something like that? Or do you scissors? Yeah, honestly, it's just it's a really thin plastic, and so you just cut it with scissors. And so what I do is you know trace it out and then cut it. Depending on the size you need, you can get uh, snowboarding goggles mm -hmm. from the DI or whatever. Just just rip out those. Like, yeah, that's another one. Need smaller, if, it, if it just needs to be like that. Maybe. Yeah, it, it's the same same type of stuff. So look at you know different visors, um, things like that. If you need different colors. Well, you can work in some. And some people have actually been able to create uh, a visor that lights up too. And so you kind of figure out how you want to do it, depends on what you're doing. So, and like for example, if you look at the Battlestar Galactica ones, um, and this is one thing that bugs me about a lot of shows when they wear helmets, they have lights inside lighting up their face. Mm -hmm. You don't really do that in helmets. You know how bright that would be in your eyes the whole time? But it's for show, and if you're showing, that's what you want to do. And so. Are, are those visors flexible at all? Or? Yeah, they're just, yeah, um, like you said, you know, the goggles. The snowboarding goggles like that—it's that exact okay. thin plastic, yeah. So somebody just posted—I don't know if it was on a cosplay Utah or somewhere—but it was linked to, an, linked to an Etsy site where they had sheets of, of visor mm -hmm. material and was translucent, all different colors. Yeah, have. yeah, you can find them all over, and a lot of places do it. And, um, I just happen to find these and look for just safety or uh, safety visors. So, yeah. Um, I was talking to a guy at an event, and he had a vest in the back, he put in those blue, like, freezer cool jelly thingies. Mm -hmm. Have you ever tried that? 
sticky be cool? I don't um, I don't I know don't, how long they last against your body. Yeah, someone mentioned that, but honestly, how at least me personally, how hot I get, it would need to have no effect. Yeah. It'd affect me for like five minutes. And then, yeah, and not all day at the con. I mean, if you, if you really, really wanted to invest some money, look at what NASCAR does. They have these cooling suits that, you know, you put on and it runs liquid all through your body. So if you really want to get into it, but you're looking at thousands of dollars just for that suit. Or NASCAR cooling systems. Yeah. Pricing. Yeah. And so there are ways to do it. So it really depends on your budget. Sometimes you just got to suck it up. Yeah. Uh, what's in your Warhammer helmet that holds your head? It is a construction helmet. Oh, yeah. I just, what I did is on a hard hat, you know, it has, it has the brim on the bottom. I just cut it off right on the top there. That way I can still use the insert where it clips in. Some people will use like motorcycle helmets, um, uh, climbing helmets is another popular one. Uh, just something, you know, depends on what you're doing. Like, for example, this one, I don't have any strapping in there. Sometimes, depending on what you're doing, uh, like the Halo guys, stuff like that, let's put enough patty in there. Just put it on their head and it sets it. Anything else? Yeah. Um, how much can you get away with using, like, black or brown or whatever color fabric instead of actually covering an area with armor? It's a good question. Um, my arms. So it has awesome plastic. Looks like a robot seal. What is that? It took me a year to find this. I just found this a couple months ago. Okay. Uh, before then, what I'd do is I'd have it in here, and I'd have just a black shirt on, and so show. And actually, I still do that on my butt area, so like that. And so it really depends what suit you're wearing. But this, but I found this uh, hose and rubber supply. It's like 34th South, 3rd West, and they make anywhere from 8 inch to 16 inch. And I just put it, just put it in my legs the other night. And is it pretty? Yeah, it's, it's a rubber. It's, a, it's you know, you can, yeah, you can get the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the stove stuff at Home Depot, but it crinkles okay. and cracks. But this is, it's rubber. The only thing about it is the very top part, I see it's actually, I use plastic on this, it comes off, is it's bright yellow. Oh. But you can, you know, maybe you want to put that in your costume. If not, you can actually just spray paint it. And that's what I, that, my other one is missing it, so I forgot to put it back in there. And that's what I did in my legs just the other night, is just use a black spray paint that sticks to plastic. So yeah, what did you do on that one? I used plastic dip. Oh, and plastic dip is actually designed to peel off after a while. Um, so, especially like plastic, it, it may peel off. But it, it works better on EVA foam because it, it gets in the pores and grabs. So, just like the idea with Centros, stuff like that, how it definitely sticks to it. Same idea. And I, I could actually probably, if I really wanted to, scuff all this up, make it stick. No, nah, I was being lazy. Honestly, I was testing it. So, but yeah, the, the first place I found that has that. In, the eight inch that I got was about nine bucks a foot, so not bad. Other place that I found it is, you know, online and uh, was it uh, the greenhouse supplies companies that would use that. What's that kind of tubing called? Just drain pipe or? Yeah, if you go in there, it's black and it has a yellow ring around it. Um, and each ring will be it'll be yellow, and you'll see it right away. And uh, I'll see if I, I even have a picture on my Facebook, I don't know, we post it, so, okay. So, any questions? Awesome. If you have any questions, feel free to, um, I'll, I'll get you, I'll put up a link of my, my papers uh, for my fan page. I've got work of progress on there. Uh, I said my cosplay name is under Ronan Angelos. Look me up. Happy to be friends with you and ask and answer any questions. So, thank you much. Um, I want to record the one in room A for my brother. Okay. The video game. Is yeah. it the one that happened? The Unix one or Unity one? Oh,